Hey guys, so I recently got into um, Yu Yu Hakusho and I noticed that it had a lot of similarities to uh, a series that I've covered on my channel before and that is Bleach. And I thought that uh, Yusuke, the main character, um, would have a really interesting battle with uh, a faction um, in Bleach that many of you guys uh, know and love and that is the Espada. And with me today, I brought in uh, my homie Clyde who has a lot of expertise on Bleach and he's done a lot of scaling videos on these characters before. And I will mostly touch up on uh, Yu Yu Hakusho side of things. And basically the whole ordeal is, how would Yusuke do against the Espada? Like, would he beat the f out of them or would would he lose or what exactly would you know be the turnout of this you know you know battle so uh introduce yourself brother yeah so uh chuck hit me up with a pretty cool idea for a video uh, i've never actually talked about yu haka show on a video before but i am somewhat knowledgeable in the series and i thought i'm down for that like i know all the asparta scaling pretty much off the top of my head because of my videos i made uh the majority of the asparta stuff that you see on youtube anyway from uh stuff that i've learned back in like 2014 up until now that over time i've just refined over and over so i feel like it would be pretty simple for me to help out with this video and the topic itself is pretty cool because the idea of say like Yusuke running the Esparta gauntlet like could he fight them all at the same time you know could he fight them and win if he fought them one after another like how does that really go so thank you very much for having me on Chuck I'm uh, pretty excited to do this and I, I feel like uh, we could we could, you know, give him a pretty good answer on this topic yeah, so first I like to start off with uh, Yusuke's side of scaling so for example right off the bat um, at the near the end of the series, when Yusuke fights against uh, Shinobu Sensui, who is like one of the final bosses of the arc, uh, it's stated that when he's like heavily suppressed, uh, he's able to like basically shake the whole planet and would endanger to destroy it as well. So you can argue that he has continental to multi-continental levels of power. Yusuke was still an A class during this point, and a I think A classes should be like generally in the country levels of power. Then eventually, uh, Yusuke gets like a training boost, and he's so strong that uh, he can basically like bat away a bunch of S classes easily and he even has a transformation on top of that so you can argue that he's easily in the planetary to planetary plus ranges of power and um, we'll get into the speed later on but basically he's like a huge powerhouse for sure and um, I think that it would give the Espada a run for their money. So first we're gonna do a basically like a goblet style battle where you know we'll go from Yusuke fighting the 10th Espada up to 9th and 8th and stuff like that and then um, when he fights all of them at once so we'll start off with the goblet essentially. I would say with Yami, surprisingly, uh, he, he does actually have some pretty good feats as opposed to the ones below him, like say uh, 9, 8, and arguably 7. Uh, for example, Yami can scale in relation to speed uh, somewhat to Urahara. He also keeps up with Toshiro to the point where he makes him so scared he goes into Bankai faster than Halibald did, which is really good. Uh, very consistent with the scaling that like, you know, him and uh, Ukiora were, were Loki always eyes on his little side projects to make really strong, hence why they've both got secret transformations. Um, so like what I do believe uh, based on what I know about Yu Hakusho is that I feel that Yusuke uh, as long as he starts off the battle very seriously and doesn't hold back he should be able to kill Yami in base and he should also be able to uh, do it in his first release too but if the fight goes too long with those two uh, the problem with Yami is as we've seen in the series is he'll just get stronger the more he rages and Mayuri implies that he could actually transform beyond just his second form which is uh, very interesting because that means he could potentially have third forms four forms and just keep going and get stronger because his whole uh, aspect of death revolves around the uh, idea of like him raging in battle so that's how I think it would go technically um it's kind of uh, weird that you know when we go down the list we're technically starting off with the arguably you know the arguable strongest as Sparta you know because he's the secret number zero but so uh, yeah pretty much like that's that's how it should go so Yusuke should be able to blitz and beat Yami in my opinion but again the issue is if the battle goes too long uh, it could be a big problem however we'll, we'll dive a bit more into Yami later on because as those of you who know who watch Bleach Yami is low-key one of the strongest Sparta secretly so I don't Nieto, like really wouldn't be a challenge. I mean, he is pretty fast. Uh, he, he did showcase that he was able to move out of the way before like a ray of sunlight hit him head on. Uh, he doesn't really have anything too special though. I mean, he lost to Rukia of all people and Rukia barely wins anything. So uh, I think that Auto Nieto would probably be like the least challenge to Yusuke who just blitz him and, you know, have, you know, be done with it, honestly. It also speaks about his fight IQ too, because Rukia baited him into a suicide attack and he, you know, lost like that, so. That's also pretty bad. He also wasn't actually an Esparta. He was uh, basically so overpowered with his ability that they allowed him to be classed as uh, part of that clique. So that's another thing too to keep in mind. So his general uh, speed and physical capabilities don't scale that high, but his um, best thing is the whole like, I can summon 30,000 hollows that I've uh, eaten randomly. So like that would, wouldn't even be a challenge for uh, 
uh, for, for Yusuke, he would literally just hit it with a, a big spirit gun and he'd just get, uh, you know, blown away from the battle. Like, I, I just can't see him doing anything to Yusuke. Now, in a spot that I think would be a bit challenging for him if Yusuke screwing around, not taking the fight seriously, would be Sazai Lapoto, uh, the Ace of Spada. And basically, like, he's not really, like, super powerful. Uh, his, uh, his whole thing is basically, like, hacks. Uh, in which uh, he basically can get a doll and he can use needles to like, you know, basically like bust her organs open and stuff like that, you know, slash him from the inside. The thing with Yusuke though is that he does have regeneration, so even if he does get like hit by that, he might be able to just, you know, negate it and, you know, just like, you know, basically just go through the pain and, you know, blitz him and just beat the f*** out of him. But I think that if he's taking the battle too lightly, then he might, you know, he might have a loose con if he, uh, if he doesn't like... You know finish the battle off the bat because if he takes too much damage it might be troubling i think the most annoying thing about zayal is that during his battle with mayuri renji and uryu is that like it's hard to tell how seriously mayuri is going against uh zayal at the time and then obviously the the whole thing about his ability is he kind of needs to absorb you to be able to um you know affect you with that so he like absorb you spit you out and then now he can uh you know, pop your organs with the little pin and the little, like, uh, uh, you know, like the plastic objects that look like, you know, say, stomach, uh, uh, liver, stuff like that, brain, etc. So, like, um, as long as Yusuke doesn't make any mistakes, I can't see him being a problem. Could you, um, give them an idea for the sake of, uh, clarity as to, uh, you know, why he would do so well against the lower Esparta? Why, why exactly would Yusuke have such, um, an easy time beating these guys when it comes to his scaling. Let's touch a bit on that before we get into the higher ranked ones as we approach like Grim Jiao and then Harley Bell and Ukiura, etc. Yeah, so for example, in the speed department, we do have like a D-class Yusuke being able to like keep up with Hiei, who was able to dodge uh, Yusuke's ray gun, which bounced off a mirror and it behaved and it was even stated to act like a ray of light. So you can argue that they have like FTL scaling right off the bat right then and there. And then obviously Yusuke goes for like C and B class and stuff like that. And once they get to B-Class, uh, they're so strong that they can, like, basically wipe out a large portion of a stadium. Now, it might not seem that impressive, but I think that generally, like, B-Class should be within the mountain levels of power. You could even argue higher. And then, as I said, with the A-Class, it should be country level. And then S-Class, it can be continental to, like, planetary as well. So I think that Yusuke, he would have some, so much of a high Reiki or spiritual energy volume that you could argue that Sazai Lapoto couldn't even affect him to begin with. I generally agree with that too, because if you guys are familiar with Yu Hakusho, a lot of the high tier characters, once they start getting into the, like, the, the demons and gods of, like, the different realms, like, those guys have some really ridiculous lore scaling, which scales directly to Yusuke because of the people that he fights throughout the series. And surprisingly, with Yu Hakusho, a lot of the stuff, like, the, uh, the FTL scaling was a little bit hard to find until Chuck did all the research recently, so... I can say that uh, when it comes to Bleach, with the lower Esparta, from my perspective of uh, analyzing the series, there are various ways to scale all of them to be casually FTL. Like for example, any character that scales to a Lieutenant or a, uh, a Menos Grande as an example, who uh, also uh, scale directly to the Kaha Nagashion and Lieutenants because uh, Ruki states that to deal with a Menos Grande, someone like a Captain has to come and clean these guys up. Now obviously we know that it doesn't really take a captain to deal with something like a Menos, but in the series when the Visors appear in Karakura Town, one of the first things they do is they go and blitz all these Menos Grande with their holification on, so Kubo was trying to say like, yo, these big dudes are kind of powerful, so it's very consistent in the series. Now listen, if the Menos Grande scaled to Lieutenants, which easily scaled below Ichigo, who also dodged the Negashion Light, which comes from the sky to rescue Eyes and Gein and Tosin, that means that there is casual light speed scaling all the way back then in the series. Now there are heaps of data book scans, which we're going to show on the screen right now. For example, Gantam Combine fires a light speed attack. It's stated in the data books that it's really a, a, a roaring light dragon type cannon thing. And uh, Chad dodges it at point blank range. Obviously, Chad doesn't scale near any of the strong characters in the series, like the Esparta, because he actually just loses when he uses his strongest attack against Noyatora. He just takes it to the stomach and he's just like, what was that? Like, it didn't even affect him. So, uh, if you scale, you know, stuff like that, uh, the Nagashion. Uh, lots of uh, light-related feats, like for example, Arden Yero, who isn't even truly an Esparta in strength, uh, as Chuck mentioned too, uh, when it comes to him dodging the, the light coming through the other room. Uh, you know, there, there are countless things. Like, we, we, as I said, can show all of it on the screen right now. So, that is something that's really interesting with the Esparta. Pretty much all of them casually, if you do believe Bleach has FTL scaling, which I think by now most normal people think that that's pretty consistent. I mean, they're all like gods of death and they're all doing crazy things like, you know, traveling through realities, blowing up cities with, ca with attacks by accident. Uh, you know, uh, threatening the world. Some characters are threatening, like, you know, the universe and galaxies itself. Like, at this stage, if they're not that fast, it would kind of be silly writing. That's just my opinion. 
But that being said, as we approach Esparta, like say Zomari or any of the other ones beyond that, how do you see him faring as the uh, Yusuke representative? Yeah, so Zomari is uh, pretty interesting because he is stated to be like the fastest Esparta. Now, I don't think that he would be as fast as say like Segunda, Etapa, Kiora, or like, you know, Koyuri uh, Starks like uh, Resurrección. But I think that if we take like the statement to a T, then it would mean that he's at least faster than all of them in base, like base to base. I'd agree with that too. And Zomari is fast enough to keep up with Byakuya, who is like one of the fastest characters in the verse as well. And Byakuya was pretty comparable to Kenpachi, who like was able to fight against uh, a strong Yami, right? The Zero Espada. Yeah, they they both uh, they both fought him at the same time. It means they're so somewhat relative with one another. And and uh, the, the only thing I do think is that this is just my perspective without being biased here is that I, I think that one of the reasons why their battle went so long wasn't necessarily because Yami was keeping up with their speed or, or like Yami was really fast or anything like that. It was more so that um, Yami was such a powerhouse that even if they fired attacks at him, he was surviving. But just that's just to give a bit of clarity in case people argue in the comments. I do think, though, that if he's caught in the situation where he has, like, his guard down, he has, like, his, you know, Reiki levels down, and then, um, Zomari uses, like, his, uh, eye ability, which, you know, he can basically, like, target your, your, your limb and he can control it. If he, like, forces Yusuke to, like, you know, hurt himself, basically, like, you know, kind of like what Byakuya did, where he, like, slashes tendons, right, so he wouldn't hurt himself or even, even further, I think Yusuke might be in some trouble, but he could argue that he could just overpower the ability with his Reiki. Like he could just, you know, power power through it and just break through the um break through the ability and then just beat the hell out of him, honestly. I would say that in a one-on-one -on -one setting, he would probably do much better against Zomari than he would in a team fight situation where they all fight him at the same time. Because um, you know, if he is not aware of the ability and how it works, and like he's having to fight all these characters that already scale directly to him and some arguably could even be stronger. Like, say, you know, second release Rukiora or, or Yami transforming infinitely or Stark spamming his uh, infinite Seros, which the data books say he has an infinite pool to fire from, which is really good. It doesn't mean that he can, like, blow away the universe. It just means that he can just fire the gun nonstop. And I think almost every Sero is probably planetary casually because of how he scales in the series. So that's really good. He could just, like, spray his Uzi at uh, Yusuke and annoy him with, like, shots coming at him all throughout the battle while the others attack him. But I feel like if Zomari... Zayel and Baragon are all existing in the fight and their abilities all can affect Yusuke while he has to fight again all these other characters that are already really strong. It's going to be pretty annoying for him because if he gets hit with the eye abilities on his body, well then he's screwed because he has to deal with that while he's got someone like Ukiora who's going to zip across the battlefield with his lance and try and behead him instantly or throw a nuclear bomb at him at any time. So that that's where it becomes difficult too so to give you guys some idea of how the Esparta can scale uh narratively too and this really depends on how much validity you give it so if you take the sokyoku at face value it has um you know it has like city to country to continental to planetary scaling with the actual manga statements made about it 36 million sunpunk toe it's apparently like so strong they use it to execute the most uh heinous people you know in the soul society all the most evil mother ever and like and the only people it can't get rid of is people like Aizen because he's immortal so if they scale to that that's pretty good the data books say it can literally overwhelm everything in existence with its power which is a pretty good feat in itself too and uh that's the one that I'm a bit more like careful with saying scales to the Esparta but if you want to use that too I mean there you go uh when it comes to Halverse if you believe that that's canon Ukiora's Seros can negate the Vasto Lorde Seros like they clash and cancel each other out and uh, the Vasa Lorde Sero scale to the Chains of Hell, which Yamamoto says is uh, something that like pretty much he doesn't believe could be cut by himself. He says it's impossible, implying he wouldn't be able to do it. The first Bleach movie has some planetary type scaling too, but I feel like the other stuff is more relevant to that, that are scaling to the Esparta directly. So uh, that's pretty much where they sort of fare. And the problem with them too is that like a lot of their really crazy DC related feats are all stuff that can happen by accident example like just by transforming yeah and by <laughs> transforming too so like like for example grim gel almost destroys lost no chairs with a grand ray Sarah in his base form and he like <laughs> the crazy part is that ichigo blocked it too so he cancelled out most of the power from it and <laughs> halibut was worried about it and her fluxion but also along with that too it's like if you multiply those powers right based on transformations and higher ranked Esparta, because obviously ukiyo and his base scales to release grim gel it just gets higher and higher and higher and higher there's also even arguments that the uh, the inside of Lost Noches might actually be a uh, pocket dimension because it is so big on the inside that it's it's almost impossible for it to look that large. Whereas on the outside, you can see how large it is compared to Ukiora's Lanzadol or Lampago exploding. So 
that sort of stuff's really interesting too. I think the data books even say that Isa made an artificial sun for the inside of it, so it's just more evidence to say that the inside could be huge. And then obviously the fact that Eisen told him, yo, don't release below the canopy of Lost Noches uh, or use Grom Ray Seros means that, uh, yeah, they scale directly to be able to destroy uh, another pocket dimension. Obviously, um, you know, Ichigo does casual stuff like this in the full ring arc where he just like releases Bankai and blows open uh, Yukio's entire pocket dimension, which recreates the whole world. Uh, some of the Esparta, like say, um, you know, second form Yami and Ukyo in his second release and then Stark. It's possible that they could have decent battles with that uh, with that Ichigo. Um, he, he would beat them because of how he scales to Yuha, but it's sort of just to give you guys an idea of the realm of power that they're in because they are still ridiculously strong even with the time skip. So uh, that should give you guys a pretty good off the dome idea of how they scale. And the thing with the Esparta too, when they transform, they get multipliers in speed by a magnitude of 10 to 100 times. So if you say take uh, Ukiura going second release, that's 100 times base. Yami's the same, so bada bing, bada boom. That's pretty much how the Esparta scale. Yeah, and uh, just to add on to what you said, um, Last Noches is so big that even though Ichigo and Uriyu and the others were like walking, I mean, they were running for like hours, it still seemed like the same distance. Like they were like, is this really this big, you know? So you can even argue that Last Noches is even larger than uh, Serite, which uh, is stated by Aizen. I mean, you can argue that Aizen was lying, right? But it, it is said by Aizen that the Sokyoku can wipe out the Serite, and obviously, like, base Ichigo blocked it, and then Ichigo was getting, like, cucked by Grimjow, like, not even serious, right? So you can easily get them to, like, city level, like, bare minimum, right? They should be country level, I think, at that, like, middle stage of the series for sure. The statement too in the uh, in the note by Eisen, no one disputes it too. Um, that's what makes it interesting. So like, if Eisen was to write in his note and say that the sky is blue, you wouldn't dispute that, would you? Because it's just part of the uh, casual writing. So I think what's uh, what's crazy about it is uh, we know Yamamoto could easily destroy the other uh, Soul Society, and they use the Sokyoku to slay people that are really really bad. So obviously, you know, it's got to be a weapon that's sort of in that same category as his uh, Ryujin Jaka in a sense. So that's something to add towards that too. And also to back up what you said about how large Lost Noches is on the outside, Nell makes a statement that it can take like three days just to get to one of the entrances. Like just think about that, that like to, to literally walk around this thing takes three days. Imagine if you walked around a, uh, a sports stadium, but someone told you it would take you three days to get to the other side. Yeah, so I think that uh, Noitora, like, because of his close range of, like, fighting style, like, I think that Yusuke would just, like, you know, blitz him and would just, like, overwhelm him with his uh, ray gun, which he can spam a lot. So I think that, like, uh, you know, the thing with uh, Yusuke is that when he fought against Yomi, uh, he was able to fire his ray gun, like, so many times without, like, being exhausted. And as I said, they have insane stamina. For example, uh, Yusuke was able to, like, stay in one position for, like, 12 hours. He's even been, been able to run for, like, s several days straight without stopping. So I think that even if, like, Noitora tries to, like, you know, steal man and just, like, you know, be like, oh, like, I can't be cut through anything, I can't be hurt by anything, right? Even if, like, you want to wank his Yero and say that he's so strong that uh, Yusuke's normal attacks can't do anything, like, I think that, you know, due to his spam, he would just, like, wear him down and then just kill him pretty easily. Yeah, I pretty much agree with that too, what Chuck said, and if anybody thinks that I'm being biased, well, Yusuke should also do the same thing to Grim Jiao, and a lot of you guys know Grim is my favourite character in Bleach, but, uh, so if, like, if we do give Yusuke some legitimate scaling and he does scale directly to someone like Ryzen, or he even has a portion of his power, that really does help him in the battle, and I feel like just the way that he fights and the way he operates is, like, well, if he's gonna have you know, a, a good battle with anybody, it's going to be the ones like Grim Jiao and Noya Tor and maybe Halibel because they don't have hacks abilities like the ones further up the list. Yeah, and then I think with uh, Haribel, um, I mean, it's the same thing basically. Um, I think that he would be able to like overwhelm her and blitz her. But I think with Haribel is that she does have like her um, her water abilities, which could give Yusuke some trouble. Yeah, she might be able to make the battlefield annoying for him, but it really just depends on how you imagine they are. They're fighting. Yeah, if they're on like a flat surface and stuff, it's possible. I don't know, we, we sort of didn't see her flex her full capabilities to summon water. I wish she had have done stuff more intensely, like cause like tsunamis on the planet. That would have been pretty impressive. I, I wish Kubo was a bit more imaginative with stuff like that to make the Aspada look really like overpowered, but she operates like very similar to, to Grim Zhao in, in this fight where they're just powerhouses that move really fast and uh, and, and sort of just like swing hard and use Seros, etc. So I feel like she'll be the same. She obviously scales better than, you know, Grim Zhao and uh, some of the others do. Um, depending on how you want to argue that, but regardless of that, she, she does fight similar, so I think that she doesn't have anything to really offer Yusuke that would, like, change the outcome of the fight necessarily. She's just going to be, as I said, fast and fire lots of OP attacks. Yeah, so before we move into, I think, like, the strongest one in all, like, overall of the Espada, I think it would be Okiora, right? 
I think before we move into him, I would like to cover like Baragon and Stark because I think like they're probably like gonna be the most challenging because Baragon is hacks abilities basically that he can rot away like attacks, right? And the only way that he was really able to be defeated was through his own power, right? Which is stupid. I don't know why he wouldn't be able to counter his own ability. Yeah, or, or turn it off, turn it off for that matter too, is what you think, right? Like if, if the hand got put into his body and just like, you'd think, just like, can't he just turn his, uh, it, uh, whatever, it's, it's, it, it's, it's fine. But um, uh, he does have a pretty cool ability too uh, in his base form where um, it isn't just the uh, ability to age people. He can like, yeah, yeah, if Yusuke is faster than Baragun in the fight and they fight at close range, Baragun can slow down his attacks. Um, so that it won't be able to hit him, which is really good. So he can just avoid it, move out the way. If he if he even taps Yusuke's shoulder, he can age his entire arm, so it becomes like an old man's arm instantly. Also, the rest spear itself, like if it spreads across the battlefield and touches Yusuke, if Yusuke has higher, like you know, like his like sort of uh, spirit energy or, or spiritual pressure equivalent, if it's higher, he could negate it. But if it does actually affect him, it could burn away his whole body, and he's just he'll just get aged into non-existence. Yeah, I think if Yusuke like has his guard down uh, and he's not at full power, and then it could affect him probably. But um, the thing is with Yusuke as well is that he doesn't just have Reiki or Yoki, which is like the demonic uh, energy equivalent, but he also has something that's like completely separate from it, which is said by Koenma, who's like the who's like basically like the leader uh, or like the ruler of the spiritual realm. He says that Yusuke obtains like this form of energy, which is not like Reiki, Yoki, or Seiko Ki, which is kind of like God Ki in a way. Um, the thing with Seiko Ki is that it is basically like so transcendent that Shinobu Sensui states that even if Yusuke had like a higher Reiki amount, it wouldn't matter because the Seiko Ki quality was just so much better. Arguably, even if, let's say, Yusuke had like a lower like Reiki amount or something like that, his uh, energy type would be like so much better quality that you could argue that Baragon's Respira wouldn't even work on him because it wouldn't, because it, I guess it'd be kind of like equivalent to like transcendent energy in a way. Yeah, and I generally agree with that too, is that um, if he can counteract it with like some higher energy source, the data books state that it is actually possible to um, overpower the Respira, so that's something that does need to be kept in mind, but if you want to like use some hypothetical like prime Baragun with Wank, like maybe he beats Yusuke, but um, that is uh, generally how it should go. Um, but judging by the stuff that I know about Yusuke and how underrated he is though, he should be fine to be able to overpower I mean, that's really up to you if you want to make the call on that Chuck, I'll go with your opinion on that. Yeah, yeah, I, um, I think that he should be able to overpower it for sure. But uh, if he's caught off guard, then um, yeah, I think he'll, he'll be in some trouble. But the thing is, like, even if he does get like an arm rot away or something like that, like he has been able to fight even with like broken bones and stuff like that. So um, I think then he can even regenerate. So you can even argue that he could just bypass it in some way. I wonder if he would know to remove his arm. Because uh, remember, Soifon had to have uh, Omida cut her arm off instantly. I don't know if he would go that far, but I mean, yeah, I don't know. That's, yeah. that's something to keep in mind. Yeah, and we can, we're going to touch up on Stark, I guess. Yeah, because I think Stark would be pretty challenging due to his, like, infinite settle or, or you know, basically, like, really high settle, like, spam ability that he has. Yeah, that's something that is going to be kind of annoying for, um... So if they're in a team fight, Stark's going to be very, um... He's going to be very useful because in the data books it states that he, he kind of has the ability to just fire infinite zeros. I touched on this before. It doesn't necessarily mean he's universal or anything like that because some people really... They misinterpret statements like these and they, and they say, like... Well, I mean, if I have infinite bullets and a submachine gun, that makes me universal. It's like, come on, bro. It means that if you, you know, spent, you could spend like a whole week shooting down a building with an SMG. You know what I mean? Like, it doesn't mean that you're universal. So, we know that his, um, his seros are like, you know, they're like planetary type seros and beyond, uh, even higher with, uh, you know, some of the other statements. Um, but that being said, he can spray those at, at Yusuke like a Uzi throughout the, uh, the battle, which is very handy. So, if they're in a team fight, you've got Stark spamming seros, you've got all the other characters spamming attacks, all these hacks abilities. So, that's where he would be the most useful, but I'd say he'd probably have a lot of trouble with Stark, depending on how you scale Stark. And that goes the same with Rukiora and the high tier ones, like the final sort of Esparta, because they are just that strong. Like, their planetary speed, their transformations, the way they scale to really overpowered characters later on, it's just pretty ridiculous. Like, wh what do you think? With the most wanked version of Yusuke that you have, Chuck, how, how do you genuinely think that he does against a hypothetical second release Rukiora? second release Yami and Stark with his like Shunsui Yamamoto pseudo type, you know, scaling wank. Yeah, so as I said, um, Yusuke, like when he fought against like Yomi and like Shinobu, like he found it pretty difficult. 
but like uh, I think one of his better showings is when he's fighting against Suzaku because Suzaku has like a lot bunch of clones and although Yusuke was like overwhelmed he was able to dodge a lot most of their attacks like I think out of the six attacks that they fired at him he dodged like five of them so I think he does, he does have the capability to like dodge a lot of their attacks but if he's fighting like more than six people at once especially that are you know like relative to each other in some way i think you'll find it really difficult especially when they have their hacks on top of it i think that if he's fighting like ukiora or stark individually like he's he's got him but if they're all fighting him like if they're all spamming settles at him and then like you know somadi uses like his eye ability like you mentioned earlier or says isla poto makes like a doll of him and then you know of course his organs and i think that yusuke would be in trouble However, I think that, um, as I said, because of Yusuke's, like, transcendent-esque energy ability that he has, he could, like, just, you know, negate all of it. Uh, the thing is, too, though, that Yomi, he did have, like, just a normal Yoki, but he had a higher amount, and he was able to overpower this Yusuke, even though he had, like, a better quality type of energy. I guess you can think of it kind of like in Dragon Ball, how, like, um, even though, you know, Vegeta had, like, normal ki, he was still able to overpower Beerus, who had, like, god ki, right? Now, I'm not saying that Vegeta really, like, was able to fight Beerus, but that moment, anyways, he was able to overpower him, right? Catch him by surprise. So, like, uh, some people have this misconception that, like, you know, if you've got god ki, like, any attack from anyone in the verse that doesn't have it means that you're, you're screwed. But if you had, like, this Vegeta that spent a thousand years in the, ti uh, in the hyperbolic time chamber, and he never had God Key. He could get to a stage where he could whoop someone's ass with God Key. That's how the series works. You, you proved that with the whole Topo tournament of PowerPoint too to me earlier. So like, I understand what Chuck's saying in that sense too. Like, I, I would generally agree with that sort of analogy from Dragon Ball to using this fire that it, it should work pretty well. Yeah, so um, also another thing too is that Yusuke does have his transformation. So let's say like, let's say at one point like they all like overwhelm him, right? They use his hacks on him. I think that he could break out of it through like just transforming and then he could blitz all of them. The thing is too that he doesn't really fight like how he normally fights because he's under like Ryzen's control. And it is unclear if he can even use the form anymore after Ryzen died. Spoiler alert. But like basically after he dies he never showcases this form again so you could argue that he doesn't even have it anymore. But I think that if he does have it for the, for the sake of the battle um, I think that he would be able to like overpower most of their abilities and then kill most of them. But the thing is his form doesn't even last that long so I think that like worst case scenario is that he's able to like break through their abilities and then kill some of them and then like he would probably just like have to fight normally um, and then he might he might be out of energy by that point. Do you have an idea of like where the transformation would multiply Yusuke by to give the audience sort of an idea? There wasn't like a multiplier given and like there are some guidebooks that I'm still translating but as far as I know there's no given said multiplier but for example when he fought against Shinobu he was still like a low S class demon and he had a pretty like equal fight with him but then after he transformed he like completely overwhelmed him. So um, basically it's just a mass massive difference that he just casually beat him with like one ray gun so. Let's just say for the for the sake of downplay, he got like twice as strong or something like that, but uh... Um, I would say, so this is my final conclusions for the video. I would say that the, um, the wanked narrative is farther with the Sokoku stuff, um, and their speed should blitz and f*** on Yusuke, that's my opinion. I think that there's too many abilities being used at the same time, and they're just gonna, they'll annihilate him. He'll, he'll get hit by Hack's powers, he'll have, uh, characters that scale speed and strength higher than he does anyway, and they'll, they'll defeat him pretty simply, but... If you use the low bold narrative one, it's way more competitive, but the hacks part will be annoying. However, it does give him the opportunity to win. And then when it comes to Yusuke having the like, uh, you know, like the wanked sort of uh, tapping into his ancestors type power, you know, going all out and having all this wild other scaling, which like if you say like the validity and the scaling is more so true in Yu Hakusho than in Bleach with, the F with, with like the FTL stuff and the destructive capability, then I would probably say that, um, you know, in that third example that Yusuke should win pretty comfortably. So. So I would say uh, two options to the Esparta and then one to Yusuke, uh, with one of them being very competitive back and forth. Um, I would say that uh, if we're using like the like the normal like Esparta, right, if we're not scaling it to the Helver stuff, uh, I think that they're generally like in the country to like large country levels of power. You could even argue continental with like the higher tiers like Okiora and Stark. But I think that they wouldn't have enough attack potency to take on him individually. But if they're all fighting together, I do think that they have a good, really good chance. Now if we are using like the wanked versions, like right, with the Sokyoku stuff and the uh, Helver stuff. I do think that the high tiers would have enough attack potency to like hurt him, but I don't think they can take him down individually. But I think if they're all working together, then I think they would be able to take care of him a lot easier. Again, uh, as I said, we do have that stuff with Yusuke having like theoretically like a transcendent esque 
type of energy, so you could even argue that their abilities couldn't even work on him to begin with. That's why I would die on the hill that uh, the one that probably would be able to 1v1 him would be uh, the most wang version of Rikiora with like the Halder scaling, the Sokoku scaling, um, him having like this alien power that like uh, Rudyu, who's quite knowledgeable on the verse, uh, even he is like, uh, I've never seen anything like this before and he was in the Soul Society amongst really overpowered characters so you've got like them casually waving their hand and like opening up portals, you've got them using like time and space manipulating attacks, all this other weird like existence erasure type attacks too and so on so... I would say, um, as I said before, like, my conclusions were pretty set in stone, but if I was to really, like, um, stick by one Asparta that, that I think would arguably win by himself, it would probably be Rikiora, um, a wanked version of, um, this, like, hypothetical third form Yami, or depending on how you want to wank Stark, because I know Stark fans go crazy, so, like, I'll give him some credit, he is quite, he is quite strong. Yeah, I, I say that uh, in a one-on-one -on -one battle, I think the one that would give him the most difficulty is probably Baragon, because like, really the only way he was defeated was by his own power, right? And then he could uh, just, just like just speed away a bunch of Yusuke's attacks, so I think he would be the most difficult that's for my, sure. Yeah, that is, that, that's true that he could age his attacks. My issue is that can he, can he age Yusuke because of how much stronger he is. So uh, yeah, I guess um, that's our final conclusion. And yeah, I, like I said, I said... um. One version stomps Yusuke, the other one's competitive with arguments for both sides, and then the other one should, I guess, like, pretty much be Yusuke wins pretty comfortably. That's, uh, that's my final conclusions, and I think this was pretty fun, to be honest. Like, Yu Hakusho is, like, in my opinion, a super underrated series. I hope that one day we see the anime get, like, a, a remaster, like, what, uh, yeah, sort of like what, you know, Hunter x Hunter 2011 got. Now, I, I know that Yu Hakusho doesn't necessarily need it, but the truth is, not enough people know about the series, and that's where it would be a really cool benefit. It's pretty underrated for sure. That aside, uh, thank you very much for having me on, Shark. I appreciate you asking me to be a part of this video. It was actually pretty fun, to be honest. And uh, I've been through the Asparta stuff so many times, but I feel like this is pretty clear cut for the video. Yeah, dude, anytime, man. Yeah, yeah. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know if you guys agree with their conclusion. Like, I want it to be, you know, fair to both sides as much as possible, so. Yeah, thanks for watching. Subscribe to Clyde. I put his channel in the description below. Yeah, go check out my Dongai Ichigo video, fellas. Yeah, that watch. one went super hard for sure. Yeah, guys, and I'll be doing other other you Hakusho stuff down the line, and I hope you guys have a good one, and peace out. Spam like on this video, boy. See you later.